Reflection is when light hits the surface and bounces back. And the law of reflection tells us that the angle at which the light hits the surface, also known as the angle of incidence, is equal to the angle of reflection, the angle at which the light leaves the surface. Now, to prove that's true today, we're going to draw a ray diagram of light hitting a plane mirror and bouncing back. Now, a plane mirror is simply a flat mirror, and it's a perfect reflector of light. We also need to have a ray of light for our ray diagram to work, and we do that using a ray box, which is simply a light bulb that's surrounded by a black container, and it has some slots that you can put into the front to make different types of rays. There's triple or single. Today, we're going to use a single ray of light, so we just place that in the front. Now, a ray box is powered by a power pack, so make sure that yours is connected correctly to the DC supply. When you turn on your power pack, the light should light up. You should have your voltage on about 12 volts. That's the best voltage for the ray box to work at. Now, the first thing I need to do is draw a line where my mirror is on my piece of paper for my ray diagram. Next, I'm going to position the ray box so the ray of light hits the mirror and then bounces back. And we can see that if I angle it a little bit that way. Now, the next thing to do is to draw a normal. Now, a normal is a perpendicular line that goes straight up from where the light has hit the mirror. I'll fill that in later with a ruler. Next, I need to work out where the ray is going and be able to draw it once I take the ray box away. So to do that, I add in two crosses where the ray of light travels on the paper. Now I can take my ray box away, turn off my power pack and start drawing my diagram for real. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some hatchings behind this line. This is the symbol for a mirror in optics. Next, I'm going to use a ruler to fill in my normal. That's the perpendicular line that's at right angles to the mirror where the light hits it. And finally, I'm going to fill in my rays of light by joining up those crosses with the point at the normal meets the mirror. Now, ray diagrams should really be drawn in pencil, and you always need to make sure that you have an arrow on each ray showing exactly which direction the light is travelling in. The next thing to do is to measure the angles of incidence and reflection, and the way I do that is using a protractor. Now, the angle of incidence is this angle here, and the angle of reflection is this angle here. All I need to do is measure them with my protractor. So I line up the protractor with the normal, I go along to see how far, so that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, that's 55 degrees. So my angle of incidence is 55 degrees. And then I measure the same for the angle of reflection, which is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 55 degrees. So I've proved there that the angle of incidence is indeed equal to the angle of reflection when light bounces off a plane mirror. And that is the law of reflection. If you do it for other angles, you should find the same result. Now, mirrors are not the only thing that reflect light. Every now and then you might see that you see your reflection in a window. And that's because light can be reflected from glass as well as from mirrors. Now, I've got here a semicircular glass block, and this is a really easy way of showing reflection in glass. So if I place my ray box back where it was, I'm going to turn my semicircular glass block around, and you'll see that at certain angles, you're getting reflection within the glass block from the light. So it's not only mirrors that reflect light, although they are the ones that reflect it the best.